thank you so much and good morning uh, today is the last day of the year 2020 uh, and this year uh, in the human history uh, one of the uh, deadly year uh, due to the pandemic COVID-19 and uh, we are thankful to the Almighty for keeping us still free from the attack of COVID-19. But COVID-19 is still ongoing. A new wave is now going on. Uh, tomorrow uh, we shall have a new year. So I uh, wish you all Happy New Year. And usually, uh, or regularly, uh, what we do on 31st, uh, we arrange a seminar uh, on uh, a topic of uh, Nobel winning topic that is related to biotechnology and genetic engineering. Uh, this year, I think uh, we can also do the same uh, at eight o'clock. Uh, we can uh, arrange such a meeting if you organize uh, it. Uh, in that case, uh, we need another thing. We need a, a greeting card uh, from our Institute of Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering. So uh, some of you can volunteer to do that. And eight o'clock uh, in the evening, we can have a short meeting just uh, to remember what we did uh, in the year 2020. And this year, uh, Chris Parker's uh, technology received the Nobel Prize uh, in chemistry. Uh, I thought uh, this topic uh, will get uh, recognition uh, in the field of physiology or medicine because more relevant, but anyway, it is also closely related to chemistry. Uh, we can have a, you know, a brief uh, seminar. Uh, I didn't uh, th uh, thought or planned anything, uh, uh, but uh, from uh, this class, uh, you can do some uh, uh, small work to advertise uh, uh, this program to others. And uh, we may have, uh, you know, uh, uh, several, uh, maybe uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes or even one hour uh, chat uh, together. Because every year we arrange in our campus and it is fabulous we to uh, uh, take the, you know, uh, food as well as uh, celebrate the year with our, you know, accomplishment. Uh, good news is that this year, although uh, we had very hard time uh, in 2020, uh, but uh, we had very good publication. We received good funding and we received some good student. We received, you know, postdoc, I have postdoctoral fellow. So we have something to celebrate and our very favorite topic uh, Chris Parkas received Nobel Prize. So what do you think? Uh, should we go for, uh, you know, an hour meeting uh, uh, to uh, celebrate uh, the year ending 31st uh, through June? Uh, yes, sir, that would be great. Okay. Uh, yes, how, sir. How about others' opinion? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Rahat, are you now in campus? Sir, uh, I am actually in the wheat field collecting, collecting uh, M2 data uh, and uh, joining the class from the field. Actually. Uh, wheat field uh, means uh, our university campus, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Okay, uh, it is no problem. So what you need after this meeting, you can discuss a little bit what you need to do just prepare a very nice greeting card 
even uh, you know you can put background of uh, green sharp green uh, you know uh, wheat field and uh, from the IBG you can write something uh, expressing uh, the greetings uh, to the uh, all uh, and uh, next uh, job is to communicate with all uh, members, uh, IBG, present member, former member even, uh, uh, because uh, I shall uh, set a Zoom meeting and share with you. So you can uh, uh, communicate with all faculty members as well as other members, uh, those who have the email address. And eight o'clock, we can have a virtual uh, gathering. Uh, uh, whoever uh, have the, you know, uh, how to say, uh, time, they will uh, join and, uh, uh, you know, celebrate that uh, year. Uh, is it okay? And obviously, uh, in early uh, uh, ne uh, next uh, year, uh, we shall arrange, uh, you know, welcome and farewell party for our members because physically today, welcome and farewell, uh, uh, maybe not so uh, uh, good. Let us uh, discuss our accomplishment in this year uh, and also uh, discuss a little bit uh, on Chris Parker's technology why it won the Nobel Prize in chemistry and how it could be useful uh, for the mankind, including, uh, you know, the field of agriculture, food and nutritional security. Is the plan okay? Sir, uh, I think it's a very good idea. Okay. Then Rahat, uh, please take a lead uh, to uh, prepare a greeting card. So uh, what we do after the meeting, we circulate the greeting card through the uh, uh, Facebook and other social network uh, and our group is, uh, obviously we shall share this greeting card first uh, uh, in the meeting. Uh, at 8 uh, p.m. Uh, and in the greeting card, you can, if possible, uh, you can add some, uh, you know, uh, symbolic way, some uh, accomplishment. I'm not sure uh, how can you do it, but think uh, uh, that, uh, that means it carries some message uh, about the uh, mission uh, of IBG or like that, uh, what we actually uh, 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 wish to do in the new year also. Anyway, thank you so much. And uh, in our last class, we discussed uh, a lot about uh, biochemistry of plant pollination, ecological chemistry of plant pollination. And we understood that how pollinators and flowers co evolved uh, and uh, during pollination, uh, the process of uh, sexual reproduction of plant, uh, how insects are getting a rewards from the uh, plant. And this mutualistic relationship is a fascinating example in the field of chemical ecology. And today we shall discuss about some uh, chemistry. And uh, I, I shall uh, discuss later on how can uh, uh, we learn this subject more deeply. You are a uh, total uh, six students, right? Uh, in this course, uh, we, yes, we studied uh, pheromones, pheromones in agriculture. Uh, it could be a wonderful topic for uh, writing a review. And I, I shall encourage uh, every student to write 
a review in this fascinating field of ecological chemistry. So one of the topic would be uh, pheromones in uh, uh, agriculture. So diverse pheromones that have been discovered by the uh, you know, scientist, their classification, their structure, as well as some of them are industrially being used as a, a tool, uh, as tools for our uh, eco-friendly management of the insect. And some of the pheromones may have some medicinal and other uh, biological activities. So uh, we can, uh, 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 some of you, even uh, two of you can uh, take the, uh, you know, responsibility of making such a uh, good review. And that review we can even publish in a, an international book or journal. Another review could be uh, the uh, ecological chemistry of plant pollination. Uh, you cannot find such a, you know, uh, a comprehensive uh, literature, uh, although the subject is studied well by ecologists, uh, by botanists, uh, or by entomologists and others. So that would be another. And we shall have some more exciting topic uh, in the future lectures. So let me show you some of the uh, uh, chemistry uh, behind the pollination. We already discussed the flower color, aroma, and all other things. Is the slide be, uh, visible? Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, uh, color preferences of pollin uh, pollinators. Color uh, preferences. Uh, in our previous talk, we uh, discussed briefly uh, which pollinator loves uh, which color uh, of the flower. So here you can see uh, animal pollinators. That means uh, different uh, insects and uh, birds and flow, uh, flower color preferences and uh, comments. This uh, table actually uh, published in the book, uh, Introduction to Ecological Biochemistry uh, written by Harbour. Uh, you see bat, Bats are also pollinator uh, among the uh, birds. So bats, they love white or drab colors and green and pale, green and pale, uh, pale purples. Uh, drab colors means green and pale purple. So these are the color preference of a bat because uh, bats are mostly color blind. Uh, they usually visit and pollinate uh, the uh, plant which have white or drab color flowers. Bees, uh, like honeybee, uh, they love yellow and blue intense uh, colors, also white. White because white color, uh, although we see white, uh, but we can see the UV light, because when sunlight pass through the uh, white color, there are some secondary metabolites there. They show bright blue color. So uh, under the UV light, some of the white flowers, you can see blue. So B can see uh, that color. So can see in UV, but not sensitive to red. That means bee, uh, bees are not sensitive to red. They less prefer uh, the red color. Beetles, uh, they love dull, cream, or greenish color uh, because beetles are poor color. Uh, beetles have poor color sense. Birds, vivid scarlets, also bicolors, red, yellow, sensitive to red. 
So red color, they love very much hummingbird and others. Butterflies, uh, vivid colors, vivid means bright colors, including reds, purples. Uh, that means butterflies are highly uh, sensible to uh, colors. Moths, red and purples, white or pale pinks, mostly pollinate at night. So mostly they love, you know, white and pale uh, pink uh, uh, or uh, at night, you know, uh, they cannot see the uh, uh, color of the petals. Rather, uh, they follow the uh, scent or aroma. Flies, a uh, dull brown, purple or green color. Uh, checkered pattern may be present in case of uh, fly pollinated flowers. Mice, whitish interiors surrounded by dark reddish bracts. Pollination occurs at night time, so it is natural. Wasp, wasps love brown color. So now you understood there are huge uh, uh, specificity uh, 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 of uh, uh, the preference of uh, pollinators in flower colors. Uh, chemical basis of flower color in angiosperms. This is most important um, because every a color is basically a, a, is a, a chemical or a mixture of chemical. So white, ivory, or cream color contains the pigments of flavones, flavones, luteolin, and or flavanols, quercetin, like that. And 95% of white flower, uh, flowered species uh, are, uh, uh, you know, uh, contains flavones and flavanols. Yellow, yellow, uh, color uh, contains keratinoids, keratinoid alone, yellow flavanol alone, or uh, n 2 chlor alone. These are the, you know, chemical compounds responsible for the yellow color, for example, marigold of, uh, marigold flower. Majority of yellows uh, color like primula, gossypium, Linaria, Ochalis, Dahlia, uh, these are the examples. Orange color, orange color, you see uh, keratinoid and yellow flavonoid, uh, keratinoid alone, uh, uh, pelargonidine, uh, orun, or like that. So, uh, sorry, uh, this D should be, you know, uh, under yellow color. Uh, and orange color, keratinoid alone, uh, pelargonidine and orun, uh, uh, this uh, 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 two. Uh, so here, uh, the calendula, uh, lilium, uh, and uh, antirenum. These are the some examples. Scarlet color, pure pelargonidine, uh, cyanidine, uh, plus uh, keratinoid. Uh, many uh, uh, plants like uh, salvia or tulipa. Brown color is res uh, responsible for the presence of cyanidine or keratinoid uh, background. Uh, for example, uh, charanthas and many or orchidaceae, uh, orchids. Uh, magenta or crimson, uh, pure uh, cyanidine is responsible, magenta or crimson color, most reds uh, like rose. Pink color, pure peonidine, uh, peony or uh, roja rugosa. Roja rugosa is a wild rose. Uh, it is pink and pink color is due to the peonidine. Mauve or violet uh, color, uh, 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 violet or uh, color like pure delphinidine. Uh, many uh, barbena uh, species. Uh, blue color, blue color is uh, associated with the mixture of cyanidine and crude pigment or metal even present. Uh, and delphinidine or crude pigments or metal. Uh, most uh, uh, 
For example, Centauria, most blues, uh, Gentiana, uh, uh, there are lots of uh, flowers in blue color. Black or purple uh, uh, black. Uh, delphinidine at high concentration. Delphinidine at high concentration become uh, black. So black tulip, uh, pansy, uh, these are the example. So green color, obviously chlorophyll. So for example, Helibora, some green color flower also available. So, uh, these are the chemistry already been uh, discovered, but uh, this uh, literature, you know, published uh, uh, by uh, J.B. Harbon in 1992, and uh, he died in 2000, possibly. Uh, after that, uh, that book was not updated. So in the literature, new literature may be available, uh, and some more elaborate and in-depth, uh, you know, um, chemical ecology of the color of flowers uh, may be available in the, uh, you know, databases. Here you can see the structure, anthocyanidine, uh, uh, chromophores of angiosperms. I told you uh, the many uh, compounds name in the previous slide. Uh, the three common anthocyanidines, anthocyanidines present in the flower petal. Uh, pelargonidine, pelargonidine structure is like that. In that case, R, R should be uh, R and R1 should be H. So here H, here H. Uh, the structure you see is slightly different. Uh, pelargonidine, cyanidine, and delphinidine. Only in the uh, side chain, a little different. Otherwise, the structure is same. Uh, common methylated pigments, for example, peonidine, uh, pitonidine, uh, or uh, melva melvidine. So uh, this is the structure. So side chain slightly different. In case of peonidine, uh, R, R means here, uh, this is uh, hydrogen. But in case of pitonidine, uh, this should be OH. And in case of uh, melvidine, uh, this should be uh, methox methoxy group, OCH3, that is OME. Similarly, rare three deoxy uh, uh, de, so, uh, oxy uh, uh, anthocyanidines, uh, for example, epigenidine or luteolinidine. So there are uh, structural uh, variations. Similarly, rare methylated pigments like histidine or uh, capensinidine. So uh, this is uh, uh, just for giving you an understanding that all these are, you know, phenolic compound, all these are flavonoidal compound uh, in the group of uh, chemical compounds. Flavonoids are one of the important uh, group uh, uh, in the uh, phenolic uh, compounds and they have high antioxidant activity and uh, in many colored uh, fruits, uh, fl uh, flower petals and uh, even vegetables, they are present and they have good effect in our health also. Uh, but obviously in flower, uh, uh, in pollination, they play a uh, uh, very specific ro ro role in attracting the pollinator. And pollinator, you see, uh, it is very difficult to memorize this structure, but pollinator over the years of their evolutionary process uh, they uh, can uh, recognize uh, this. Even pollinators do, uh, does not know that uh, uh, the structure <laughs> naturally, but uh, they know the color and uh, they can discriminate the flowers where uh, pollinators are specifically to visit uh, for uh, getting the uh, nectar as well as the uh, uh, pollen grain as their food source and unconsciously or consciously uh, they do the pollination of the flowers. So factors controlling cyanic colors in flowers. Uh, that means uh, flower colors usually been uh, controlled by different uh, you know, factors. For example, a hydroxylation pattern of anthocyanidines based on pelargonidine and cyanidine or delphinidine. 
So hydroxylation pattern I have shown in the structure. Hydroxylation means in the side chain of benzene, uh, if uh, hydroxyl group replace the uh, you know hydrogen, uh, then uh, it can change the flower color. Pigment concentration. This is another factor uh, because concentration is uh, uh, associated with the visible uh, color. Uh, deep concentration of delphinidine in the previous lecture, you have seen it looks like black. Presence of flavon or flavanol co-pigment may, may have bluing effect. Presence of chelating metal, some metal uh, in the structure uh, sometimes chelate. Uh, they, uh, for example, calcium, magnesium, and they also uh, uh, you know, exert bluing effect in the flower color. Presence of aromatic acyl substituent, uh, bluing effect. Uh, aromatic acyl substituent, that means in the, uh, uh, if acyl group is uh, replace uh, the uh, uh, hydrogen, then a uh, bluing effect can be uh, happen. Presence of sugar uh, on B ring hydroxyl reddening effect. In the B ring, you have seen three rings in the flavonoid structure. So in the B ring, uh, B ring, uh, uh, actually two rings in the flavonoid structure, I can show you. Uh, uh, this is A ring and this is the B ring. And this is not actually ring. Uh, the, uh, here, not six carbon. So in the B ring, uh, if uh, uh, it is said, uh, a presence of sugar on B ring hydroxyl uh, reddening effect. Uh, and methylation of anthocyanidine, small reddening effect, methylation, that means uh, OCH3, if replace the hydrogen, then it has reddening effect. Presence of other types of pigment, keratinoids have browning effect. So these are the uh, biochemistry uh, or ecological chemistry so far being discovered on cyanic color flowers. Here you can see intermolecular co-pigmentation. Uh, intermolecular co-pigmentation means garden fascia uh, hybrida, uh, hydroxyl group uh, if uh, present there, or intermolecular uh, co uh, pigmentation. Here you can see aromatic acyl group or flavone co-pigmentation, anthocyanidin, chromophore, or sugar. If, uh, uh, as I discussed in the previous table, uh, they can also uh, change the, uh, 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 you know, uh, color. So uh, uh, this is, you know, depicted, depicted in the just illustration, not the real uh, structure. So this is uh, sugar and uh, this is, you know, uh, the anthocyanidin chromophore. Uh, and this one is flavon co-pigmentation uh, and uh, this is uh, the aromatic acyl group. So in the uh, structure, uh, inter and intramolecular co-pigmentation uh, can be taken place. Uh, uh, this type of you know, derivatives uh, can be uh, uh, present in the flower color and uh, responsible for the variation. Some uh, carotenoid pigments of yellow, you know, carotenoids. Carotenoids are uh, very, very important for us. Uh, beta carotene, you know, beta carotene is the uh, precursor of beta carotene is the precursor of vitamin A. Uh, so, but uh, if uh, in the carrot you can find it, uh, or in other flowers also definitely. Uh, in tulip, geaxanthin, uh, geaxanthin. Uh, this morning I took one capsule, xanthin, xanthin four uh, available in the market. It is very powerful antioxidant because you see lots of, uh, you know, unsaturation. So if in your body superoxide is generated, then they can, uh, this compound can neutralize. So uh, geoxanthin, uh, commercially available and very expensive uh, capsule. Uh, lycopene uh, present in tomato uh, or uh, in the uh, marigold. Uh, here you see lots of unsaturation in the structure. Uh, Flavogenthin in yellow chrysanthemum. Uh, and crocein, uh, uh, crocus flower, here you see uh, this glucose and other unsaturation. So some carotenoid pigments of yellow flowers uh, figures in parentheses and visual maxima uh, measured in ethylacetate. Anyway, uh, they are a very, uh, these are the, you know, here you can see the number. These are the, you know, uh, UV 
wavelength. In the wavelength, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, these uh, numbers are wavelength UV maxima, maxima at ethyl acetate. If you dissolve this compound in ethyl acetate, and if you take the UV past the UV light, you can uh, see this compound uh, uh, visible uh, in that uh, light. So uh, these are very important keratinoid pigments present in the uh, yellow uh, color. Uh, here, yellow flavonoids and alkaloids pigments. You see, alkaloids also can be the pigment. Gossipatin. Uh, Gossipatin here, you see, this is a, a, a flavonoidal structure. Uh, and uh, quercetagetin, uh, uh, this is another structure. So slightly bronze, uh, uh, you know, um, substitution of hydrogen in, uh, with the hydroxyl a bit different, otherwise structure skeleton is same. So only uh, a difference in R and R1 position. Uh, butane, uh, chalcon of uh, seropsis, uh, this is another compound. And oreocidine, uh, orun of yellow, uh, anti uh, 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 anti uh, plant, and uh, indicagentin uh, or beta gentin. Uh, it is Opuntia africus uh, indica flower. So uh, scientists, you see, they discovered uh, lots of, you know, uh, biochemicals. They are responsible for the uh, flower colors and the pigments. And some of them are now using as the medicine, not only, uh, you know, the understanding. So discovery of the compound is very important. And then you can synthesize the compound and check whether it has any medicinal principle. Flavones and flavanols of white petals, uh, especially camphorol, quercetin, epigenin, luteolin, they are the uh, 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 compounds uh, present in the uh, white petals. So under the UV light uh, mentioned uh, in the wavelength mentioned in the parenthesis, you can easily see them and they will give the color. And we cannot see in the direct, uh, 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 directly by our eye because we have a certain wavelength uh, uh, range uh, and after that we cannot see. But uh, honeybee can uh, see and uh, uh, they can easily uh, follow uh, this uh, compound uh, for pollinating the uh, flowers. So uh, evolution in cyanic color in angiosperm, how evolution is taken place. Here you can see uh, three prime hydroxyl group in the, uh, you know, B ring uh, or a five prime uh, hydroxyl group in the A ring uh, can be changed. And uh, this type of small changes uh, taken place over the years. And this is the diversity among the uh, flower colors in the end use form. So uh, direction of evolution in cyanic color, how uh, they started uh, and, uh, uh, and they are evolved scientists already discovered the uh, pathway and uh, some pigment complex also developed. And this understanding also help us to make, uh, you know, uh, a, a new color for the fabric. Uh, yeah, you can use this pure compound for dyeing the uh, 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 textile uh, and uh, in the textile industry and very uh, interesting. And also uh, these changes uh, uh, in the structure uh, we can also check uh, their biological activity. So this is all about uh, today. Today is the last day of, uh, you know, uh, how to say, uh, the year. Uh, so uh, a correlation between anthocyanidin type, flower color, and pollination in uh, polymonese. Here you can see uh, uh, different plants and different, you know, po uh, uh, pollinators uh, in the polynesi plant and uh, flower colors and petal anthocyanin need. Uh, here uh, the chemical name of this uh, short form is there. So you, uh, what we understood from this lecture, uh, that means uh, there are incredible diversity in the structural variability in the, uh, 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 that are responsible for, uh, 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 you know, giving the phenotype of flower color uh, and uh, possibly the pollinators, they know the structural uh, variation uh, and uh, they can sense and follow the uh, uh, flowers 
uh, for their uh, pollination. So thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, uh, today's lecture and we can now discuss uh, about uh, more, uh, more on this topic. So this is now uh, 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 your time uh, to ask some question. Sir, uh, you have mentioned the uh, beta uh, carotene, which is the precursor of vitamin A. You have consumed in the finished products such as capsules. So uh, is it possible to uh, consume the raw form that may be the uh, lower price uh, or that may be uh, feasible to the rural peoples or the uh, people of um, a poor community. Yes, uh, you know, uh, uh, vitamin A is very important for our eyesight. Uh, every year, many children uh, uh, they are uh, uh, becoming blind due to the deficiency of vitamin A. And worldwide, it is a big problem. Many people even died and the number of people died due to uh, the deficiency of vitamin A is higher than the uh, people died due to HIV uh, virus. So vitamin A is very important. And we are getting vitamin A from the you know, colored uh, vegetables and uh, colored uh, fruits also because uh, beta carotene is their most uh, rich. Uh, one of the richest source is carrot. If you take the carrot directly, a small piece of carrot, you can get lots of uh, beta carotene. And uh, all the you know, colored vegetables, uh, they contain the vitamin, uh, 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 precursor of vitamin A. Uh, so it is obviously better to have the uh, vitamin A not as a capsule, rather uh, as the food source. And uh, genetic engineer, biotechnologist, uh, about 20 years ago, uh, Ingo Potricas, they, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, developed the transgenic rice uh, from beta carotene biosynthetic gene uh, from the daffodil that transferred to the rice. The, at that time, there was a debate because um, daffodil is not, you know, uh, edible plant uh, and it is an ornamental plant. Later, uh, scientists uh, found uh, the same biosynthetic pathway in maize. Uh, maize uh, has the you know beta carotene biosynthetic uh, uh, genes, and they uh, uh, then uh, targeted maize gene to transfer into rice. And in our country, Bangladesh is one of the leading country. Uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, developed golden rice in our varieties and uh, uh, brie uh, in collaboration with the IRI and they submitted a file for uh, public release uh, after rigorous bioassay, uh, 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 you know, uh, testing uh, in the uh, laboratory and field and they found no uh, negative effect. Uh, and it is now in the Ministry of Environment for final release. And if it is released, then in addition to carbohydrate uh, from rice, you can also get the vitamin A. Uh, and every day, if small amount of vitamin A we get from the rice, then our requirement will be satisfied. And that would be good uh, a source because all of we are eating rice every day. Uh, otherwise, in your case or in our case, we need to take, you know, fruits and vegetables uh, every day, colored fruits and vegetables. But uh, most people uh, in the modern life, uh, you know, they avoid uh, these items from their diet and it is uh, creating a big problem. Many micronutrients, not only vitamin A, A other vitamins and minerals, we are missing from uh, our diet. And as a result, different you know, physiological problems uh, we face. Uh, even uh, you know, uh, if you have a huge uh, superoxide in your uh, cell and if you have no uh, antioxidants like bit, uh, uh, beta carotene or other zeaxanthin or vitamin C, then you may suffer from cancer and other, uh, you know, destructive diseases in your immunity, obviously, uh, fall or you may face, uh, you know, uh, a, a serious aging process, faster aging process or like that. 
Thank you. Any question? Any more question? No. Sir, I have also the same kind of questions like the rule of new high. Uh, as you have said, sir, uh, the xanthanin uh, could be found in the flower petals uh, responsible for the color. So how much it would be beneficial for us to eat the raw petals of flowers to get those raw, intoxicants? Raw, raw petals of flowers, actually, I found in the you know, salad item in uh, Japan. Uh, some of the post restaurant, they offer, you know, uh, the uh, pigment that I mentioned, uh, they cultivate, uh, you know, uh, uh, plants, herbs, and collect the uh, petals and add into the, you know, uh, salad. And, uh, but it is practically uh, not available in our uh, system. Uh, uh, we, uh, I, I found uh, some people take, you know, um, a sweet cold flour uh, and uh, they fry or some way they eat. Uh, so uh, flour, uh, addition of flour petals in the uh, diet uh, or in the dining is uh, uncommon in our country. But what you can do in the fruits and vegetables, uh, they are abundant. So in the salad item, many uh, lettuce and many other, uh, you know, uh, colored cabbage uh, or uh, many other, uh, even uh, how to say, uh, beet, table uh, beet uh, contain lots of, you know, uh, pigments, uh, complex uh, pigments. Uh, they are also uh, offering huge amount of uh, you know, geosanthine like uh, substances and help you to get antioxidants from the natural sources. So uh, it, it depends on the uh, food habit. For example, red, uh, pink color or yellow colored, you know, uh, uh, the sweet potato uh, or many other, uh, uh, for example, if you take uh, the corn, uh, uh, sweet corn after uh, boiling, you can have the, you know, some uh, beta carotene or like that, and you can take carrot obviously. Uh, so uh, lots of sources naturally uh, available in our country, but our consciousness, uh, uh, how can we combine them? Because they require very small amount, but they are essential. Uh, uh, to, to prepare our uh, a diet in a new way is really important. So consciousness as well as knowledge, information is available, uh, not, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, available, but not well circulated and well understood by our uh, society. Because in Bangladesh, people thought rice and fish is enough uh, for the uh, food and life, uh, but uh, rice and fish uh, are not enough you need some more other, you know, minor uh, yeah, elements or minor components uh, like uh, geosanthine or uh, the different antioxidants or minerals, very small quantity, but they are very good uh, to keep you, uh, you know, healthy, uh, to keep you younger. Uh, and they are anti-aging, uh, they have the anti-aging effect. They boost uh, the immunity uh, to fight against the disease, uh, as well as even uh, suppress the, uh, uh, you know, uh, cancer and many other uh, deadly uh, uh, diseases, neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, in that case, we need to, uh, uh, you know, uh, be careful uh, and uh, we need to uh, diversify uh, our food choices <laughs> like uh, you see, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, supply uh, whatever uh, your body needs uh, from our local uh, sources. A good question. Next. 
Sir, I, I want to word. Uh, I, I I want to add uh, one thing, uh, especially uh, uh, in the Europe. They are also um, using the color, uh, natural color, from from different fruits and also uh, some other stuffs, and they are using in the industry. Mm -hmm. Right, natural color, natural color. You know, uh, the do you know uh, saffron? most expensive color. There are, uh, you know, commercially uh, lots of uh, color and we uh, use, uh, uh, you know, some synthetic uh, uh, color, which are even carcinogenic. Uh, sometimes we don't know uh, to make our food colorful, but natural colors, most of them, they are, you know, uh, uh, anthocyanin pigments uh, and they are flavonoidal compounds and they have antioxidant uh, uh, activities and very good for our health. Any question? If no question, uh, then before I close, I shall share, uh, you know, uh, the link uh, of our uh, 31st meeting 8 uh, uh, p.m. So uh, please uh, do quickly uh, to circulate uh, among uh, all the uh, members. So what you do, uh, contact with uh, other members and make a chain of uh, communication so that all uh, people can get uh, the information and we can have, you know, just uh, an hour uh, discussion uh, or talk, a free talk uh, uh, and also uh, uh, you know, we can evaluate what we did and uh, what we achieved in uh, 2020 and uh, what we can do better in 2021. Rolamin? Yes, sir. It's a very good idea. So I'll also uh, deliver it to others. Uh, those are already established or have from IBG and remaining abroad. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, this is all uh, uh, from now and your evening class would be only 30 minutes and then we shall start our 31st uh, party, you know, party food and new things. <laughs> but what you can do, you can have you know, drinks and uh, coffee and, uh, uh, you know, other food uh, on your uh, desk and uh, uh, join the celebration. Uh, thank you so much and I welcome all of you uh, to join uh, the program at 8 p.m. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.